my god. <sighs> this beautiful brook trout. Alright, so we've made it to the logging road where my access point is. And really, any good canoe route in Nova Scotia starts on a long, long logging road. Okay. I th think I go this way. But I'm not sure. Oh, but here we go. Going on guys, Noah here with Northern Scavenger and I've just pulled up to the put-in for a weekend trip here in Nova Scotia. I have three days, I'm by myself and to be honest, I wasn't even gonna film this trip. It's a very unique time that we're all in right now. We're in the back end of a global pandemic. There's riots down in the south and there's nothing more therapeutic to me than just being in the wilderness. The conditions are still good for trout fishing so I plan on getting in some of the back lakes here, doing a little fly fishing. I got three days to myself. I got my canoe, I got my pack, I got my fishing rod. And I'm gonna keep it very simple this weekend. So the lake I'm trying to get to is three lakes down and there's a couple of big portages. Taking my time, no rush, this is the day, I'm just hanging out as I go. It should take about three to four hours to get there. It's very calm waters. I really enjoy this weather because it's not too hot, it's not too cold. There's a cool breeze keeping the bugs off, absolutely beautiful. So I got to the last portage before the main lake. This one's kind of rough, so I'm gonna mentally prepare for this. There's a lot of undulation, there's some fallen trees over the, the, the portage trail. It's not marked either, but I've done it a couple times. If you kind of just keep your wits with you, you can get across, but it is, it's definitely one to make you sweat, so. Made it.
got the boat over. A little sweaty, a little buggy, a little hungry. You guys might be curious. Hey, I wonder what Noah eats for lunch on these trips. Out here in Nova Scotia, brother's pepperoni, it's a staple. You got your nan bread, you got your brother's pepperoni, you put that on like that. That's all you do. All you need to do. Don't complicate things, boys and girls. Super simple. Noah, where's the flavor? When you're hungry, the condiments are just extra stuff to carry and remember to bring. So over the years, I've slowly simplified these lunches to just meat, cheese, and bread. Or in this case, meat and bread. I'm about four kilometer paddle from the island I want to camp on. And I'm contemplating stopping to, to fish in a fishing spot before heading to the island or heading to the island to set up and then going back to the fishing spot. I have a special recipe that I want to try out using fresh brook trout and another secret ingredient found in Nova Scotia. Another thing I realized I forgot is a headlight. I lost my headlight a couple trips ago and I keep forgetting to go pick one up. So I'm bound by the daylight today. So I want to make sure I have my firewood and everything ready and done before it gets dark tonight. I got down to the end of this portage and I was doing some casts down here in this pool and right up at the head I'm seeing splashing in the water and it's either gas bro running, spawning suckers, or trout. So I'm going to try to sneak up on them. Nothing. There's one right at my feet. Yeah. Definitely not trout. Oh well, that was exciting. Fish are jumping there, I don't know what they are. Come on! As soon as I turn the camera off, I got hit. Just a little guy though. All right, the camera died, and I don't know how much footage you guys saw, but I kept casting the fly in that little pool where they were rising. This beautiful brook trout took my topwater fly. This one's for dinner. Beautiful fish. I don't have a measuring tape. 
But that is a good sized brook trout here in Nova Scotia. Very respectable size. I would say about 12 inches, give or take. That's all I'm gonna need for dinner. So I might just do some more cash just for fun. But this is what we came here for. So now that we got the trout, I'm in search for the other Nova Scotia ingredient. And typically you can just go to the shorelines and they're full of them. That's right. The cranberry. So for my purpose, that should be more than enough. They are a pretty bitter berry. You can add a lot of sugar and it does make it a lot sweeter. But if I'm in a portage, I'll just, I'll eat these things raw right off the ground. But it's a very good berry. Uh, a lot of things you can do with it. And we're gonna be doing something new tonight. So stay tuned. section of the, the lake here there's a bunch of islands and I know from past experience that one of these islands has a decent campsite I should be sheltered from the wind there should be firewood and there should be a good swimming spot if I'm inspired tomorrow Land ho! All right. Look at that. There's a table. It's a relatively condensed site. Fire pit right here. The camera's on the uh, tent pad, but condensed is good, you know? It's, we're sheltered. The first thing I like to do when I get to a site is get the water filter going. And I have a four liter gravity fed platypus. And all I gotta do is scoop up the water, hang it in a tree, let it do its thing for 15 minutes, and I have four liters of fresh water. Sometimes there's an airlock in here, so I just take it out of the filter, and then make sure it's fully loaded with water. There you go. After that, I will put up the tent, and then start collecting firewood, and start preparing dinner. Easy as that. I love this tent because it's so easy to set up. So this is obviously a very old, not really used fire pit. So I'm gonna get some more rocks and build up the back to have a nice chimney rock and build up the sides a bit before I start a fire.
not happening. All right, so I pretty much dismantled this entire fire pit. I'm gonna keep it in the same spot, but I'm gonna to totally rebuild it. So there's three main things that I try to make on a fire pit. And the first one is the chimney rock in the back. So that's what this one is for right here. Pretty much what you want is you want a big flat rock that when the flame hits it, it, it pushes it up and it holds onto all that heat and it's great for for creating a platform up there for cooking. So the first thing is finding a rock that'll work well as a chimney rock. The second is having an opening in the front. A lot of people have like traditional round pits. It's not really the best way to do it. What you want is you want, like think of like a wood burning stove in your house. You're not adding wood on top. You're, you're pushing it, you're putting it in through the side. So what I'm gonna do I'm gonna have two side walls, the chimney rock, and an access point to put the wooden underneath. And then I have a grill here that I'm gonna place on top of the side walls. So the three things, chimney rock, access to stoke your fire, and a flat surface on either side to put your grill. So we're gonna start with the big boy here. The next thing is build around him. All right, and you gotta figure out how big you want your fire. I don't need it too big, but still I wanna have a decent amount of light tonight, so, well, especially because I don't have my flashlight, so I'm gonna make it a little bigger than it used to be anyways. It's double rock there. And then also, as you work, as you create your walls, you gotta make sure they're stable. So when you're, you have a very hot fire, you just don't want a rock rolling anywhere. So make sure that you secure your rocks with other rocks so nothing moves. And it's kind of like a jigsaw puzzle. You just kind of work with what you got. And just keep trying different options. So I, I got more rocks than I needed. It's never bad to have more rocks than you need, really. I just stacked them more around. And I think this will do me just fine for tonight. If I was really picky, I'd make that chimney rock even higher. But I'm not that picky. And the other test is make sure your grill fits. And I think that's going to be fun. Next on the list is firewood. I also found a couple interesting things back here I'll show you guys. First off is this very random, randomly placed stove. And I think it is accompanied by, there's this clearing here and there's this old, looks like an old platform. So. I think it was an old shed or cabin of sorts. And there's nothing really I can use in there. But what I did find already, I found some dry wood. That's hardwood. Dry hardwood is far superior than dry softwood. It has a much higher BTU, which is a higher, I don't know what the acronym stands for, but it burns a lot hotter and longer. So it's because it's a lot more dense than the softwood, hence the name. So if you're in the woods and you're trying to find firewood, the number one thing you want to look for is standing hardwood. And that's what we got here. So we're going to start processing that. And then I got some uh, dry standing softwood as well. So we'll get her all done and then get the fire going. The saw I'm using is the Bear Essentials Buck Saw, 21 inches. These are handcrafted by my buddy out in Ontario, Canada. Highly recommend them. Not only are they a piece of art, they also cut like a beast. 
I take this on every camping trip with me. All right, most of the chores are done. Tents up, firewood's collected, fire's going. I'm gonna let that die down a bit to get ready for dinner. In the meantime, I think I'm gonna set up a tarp here. Uh, it's starting to rain a bit, and there is rain in the forecast. But before I do that, I think I'm gonna enjoy myself an IPA. Brewed locally in Halifax. Shout out to Propeller. This is one of my favorite beers. All right, I'm gonna put you away as I get this tarp up because it is starting to rain. Hey yo, what's going on? We got the tarp up. So I didn't bring a lot of paracord, so I had to use the rope for my canoe, and I was one short. So I had to MacGyver something, but I think that's gonna do the trick. If it rains a lot tonight, it will start pooling right in the middle. So I might have to do some sort of taper uh, at some point if it does start raining hard, but we're good for now. There he is. So I just gutted him, now I'm just taking out the blood that's along the spine. That is some red meat. Oh yeah, boy. So I'm gonna show you what he's been eating. They look to be little green nymphs. When I'm fly fishing tomorrow, I'm gonna wanna try to match the hatch. So I'm gonna wanna probably drift some green nymphs tomorrow and we'll see if that works with those guts actually interesting thing is I actually found a minnow trap on this site so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bait that minnow trap with these guts to see what we see all right it's time for the big reveal what's for dinner I'll show you What we're going to be doing is we're going to be making pizzas with nan bread, bacon, walnuts, wild Nova Scotia cranberries, wild caught Nova Scotia brook trout, and brie cheese. Step one, cut the bacon. Oh, this thing is like 95% fat. I don't want to cook the cranberries per se, but I do want to heat them up to the point where they're a little more uh, tender. I'm going to grab some of my water here. Not too much, you just want to steam her a bit. And you just put some cranberries in there. It's a short lunch. So the cranberries are just plumping up a bit. This bacon fat is about to get hit with some fresh brook trout. But before we do that, let's just appreciate this bacon quickly. Oh yeah. Oh baby! Yes. <laughs> 
go. Oh, man. I think the tail's done. So I'm going to put that with the bacon. Yeah. There is the surf and turf. How is this guy doing? Oh, bubbling away. So small error on my part. I forgot the aluminum foil. My original plan was to put make the pizza inside the aluminum foil and put it in the coals, but I'm gonna have to come up with another strategy. I don't know what that is yet. Actually, what I think I'm gonna do is use the frying pan as like almost like a re reflector oven. I'm gonna get this fire going again and kind of put the pan on the side and hopefully the, the it'll It'll melt the cheese. We'll see. There it is. Pre-cooked. Let's see if we can do this. So that's going to take some time. I don't want to cook it quickly and I don't want to burn the bottom. So I'm going to let that go. But luckily, there's a lot of extra trout. So I'm going to try some right now. Oh my goodness. Come on. Focus. Focus. Oh my God, that's so good. All right, so I'm gonna eat this trout and whatever bacon is left over as we wait for the, the main course. I'll keep you posted. All right guys, I think it's ready. I'm gonna eat it. Oh my God. There's so much fat in here. It's so rich. I don't even know how to bite this thing. Imagine that this was a Subway sub you could get, a 12 inch. Brook trout bacon. Cranberry. so hot. Oh, the cheese melted perfectly. I'm a little curious to see how the cranberry brook trout combo is. I was thinking about that to be honest. It's there though. Oh man. The crunch from the bacon the softness from the brie cheese and the absolute tenderness from the brook show just all complement each other. There's just so much flavor in there. All right, I'm gonna finish this one in peace. See you guys after. I think that might've been one of the best meals I made in the back country in terms of like using what I have around me. So good. We're also getting to that point of the night where it's probably getting on nine o'clock. I don't have a headlight. 
so I'll probably be moving over to the tent pretty soon. Tomorrow, my plan, originally I wanted to do a side route and uh, go to some of the, the back lakes, but I think I'm just gonna relax. We've done a lot of hard trips this spring so far, and I don't know. I, I, I think I'm just gonna stay on the main lake, do a little exploring. No agenda for this weekend, which, which is amazing. There's always something going on. There's always a plan, and I love it. I, I love I love to keep moving. I love to keep doing stuff, but it is also really nice to just be out here by myself with no plan and just enjoy it. Yeah. Oh, I got my wood wet. You don't want to smother it, which I almost did there. You want to make sure the oxygen can get in there. So last night I put the guts of a brook trout in the minnow trap that I found at the campsite and I put that right behind me. I left it out overnight. We'll see what we caught here. Some little perch in there, that's about it. Oh, that's not a, yeah, it's a perch as well. Two perch. I'm gonna put it back out to see if we can catch anything else. So this weekend I decided to go glamping and I brought my Java Express uh, GSI Outdoors. What it is, it's one of those plunger coffees that you put your grounds in, then you put your hot water and then you let it steep for a bit and then you push down and press all the grounds to the bottom. This is good for, I find, for two people. 
three people you're gonna have to do two rounds of coffee and uh, it just takes longer for the boiling process. On longer trips, what I'll do, what you've probably seen in other videos, is you just boil water cowboy style and just put the grounds in and then let them settle to the bottom and then pour that coffee. It's quicker and it's better for uh, larger groups of people, three, four, five, but if you can fit it and you want to glamp, just bring a Java Express for two or less. So as I sit here and eat my breakfast and kind of dry different things, you know what, yesterday when I built this fire pit, I had a bunch of extra rocks, so I put them on the side. Well, it turns out those rocks are great for different levels of heat. So depending on how much heat you want on something, you can put it on a different rock. I left my shoes on the fire a little too long. It's like hollow in there now. These are the shoes I brought to Labrador, so they have been beaten up pretty badly. And I am in need of new shoes even before I burnt that out. Maybe that's just the river gods telling me to buy a new pair of shoes. So I just cleaned up camp a bit. It's already about noonish. The plan is to go back to that fishing spot I was earlier to try to catch a fish for dinner. But I might actually sneak a little farther down that little creek and hit some more pools. But before I do that, I am running low on firewood and I want to spend more of the evening over there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, paddle the shoreline of the mainland over there to see if I can find some hardwood for tonight. Ooh, there's a big one. Might be too big for me to cut though. Just walking to the shoreline here, not a lot of dead hardwoods, and I don't want to spend too much time looking for hardwood. There are some, some standing dead softwoods here, so I think I might just call the uh, call the search quits and just take down one of these, these big standing softwoods and just collect more wood. But the other thing with these shorelines, it's so rugged. It's There's all these rocks and there's moss and it's soaking wet. So it'll be kind of a hassle to get to that one that I want to take. But once I take it out, I'm going to drag it to the shoreline and then process it here. I just got back to camp and I unloaded the firewood. And now I'm gonna head to the fishing spot for the evening bite. So another thing that I did not bring on this trip was bug spray. And we are still, I guess, on the peak of black fly season here in Nova Scotia. And I don't have a good excuse, really. But I do find if you do have a bug net like this, and a buff, it keeps them away, pretty much. You still get hit every once in a while in the temples, but other than that, it's not too bad. So there's there's other options than just dousing yourself head to toe in DEET.
So there's these small black flying caddis looking things, uh, probably about size 16 or 18. There's also these birds flying over the surface of the water here. So I think they're also picking off these flies. So I'm gonna throw on a, a parachute, see if I can get some rises. Getting hits. I'm not sure if you can see that. Look at that, nice little guy. We're gonna put that guy back. Woo, that's one. Having trouble seeing my fly. I'm just gonna trust that it floats and goes through the spot. I'm finding if I get the fly in the spot they are, they'll hit it. But the hardest part is getting it where they are, or my uh, fly sinking. But when you get a good drift, they're always hitting it. Sometimes they miss, but they're definitely interested. Based on that hypothesis, if I can use another fly that, that I have more confidence in in terms of the floating capability, maybe it's more important to get it where they are than the color of the fly. And if that's the case, I might put on an El Caricatus that floats pretty high and can get through the riffles. Let's see if they slay it. All right, so no more luck here. The sun came out and it started to get a little hotter. Maybe that has something to do with it. I'm gonna go down to the next pool down there and there's a small, there's one set of rapids that are gonna be more of just um, a trickler right now. There should be a lot of rock down there, so we'll have to navigate that. So we're coming up to the first obstacle. Looks pretty bony, but I think we can find a line. There hasn't really been much activity here. I'm gonna give it a few more uh, casts and then I'll probably head back up to that first spot and start thinking about fishing for keeps. Cause I would like a trout for dinner tonight. But you might be curious, hey, is Noah gonna be heading back up the rapids? Uh, I am not. There's a portage to my right here that takes me up to a, a lake at a higher elevation. Last time I did that section was about a month ago and the water is down like three, three and a half feet. So there might be an arrows up there that I'll have to drag or something. Oh, I get blue in the morning. I get blue in the evening too. 
Nice little guy. So, new species. I don't know what it is. Maybe one of you guys can tell me. It almost looks like a shad. Or a shiner or something. Okay, I did not have the camera going for this, but beautiful little brookie for dinner. I just caught him in this pool right here. I'm bummed I didn't have the camera going. I was just, I'm running out of batteries. So I've been a little more hesitant to film all my shots, but go and behold, lo and behold, whatever that saying is, try it on the pan tonight. It's about seven o'clock. The weather got a lot nicer out in terms of it got sunny and, and warmer, which isn't as good for the trout, so they kind of shut off for a bit. But I did a lot of experimenting, using a lot of dry flies. I tried some nymphing techniques. And at the end of the day, I would say the winner has been the black parachute. The old black parachute it was mimicking that, that small black caddis that I caught when I first got to the spot. I got myself a trout for dinner and it's gonna go really nicely with the other stuff that I brought. And it's gonna be a beautiful paddle back too. So the fire's on. I'm letting it burn down a bit so I can get some hot coals for dinner. See if we caught anything during the day. The game plan tonight, the big reveal. So I'm gonna use the other half of my bacon 
took that down, used that bacon to cook the brook trout again, and then instead of flatbread, I'm gonna have ramen noodles. And I think the big twist is I'm not gonna use the ramen noodle seasoning, and instead I'm gonna get rid of most of the water and then add the rest of the brie cheese from last night, make it nice and gooey, add the bacon, then add the brook trout. Bon appetit! So I took out a lot of the water, so now it's more like a, a stew. I'm just gonna stir that in. Oh yeah. Now time to add the other good stuff. Bacon. Let's pull apart this trout. that all in. So it's one big gooey mess with a bunch of meat in there. Let's give this a go. Pretty good. Not as good as a flatbread last night, but it's a little more watery than I expected, but still very good. It was a great day. And I don't know where the day went. I just kept fishing in different holes and trying different flies and just messing around here. And uh, it was it was great. And on that note, might as well salute with a beer. You guys already know. So I woke up to a switch in the wind direction. The wind has moved and now is heading from the east. And typically on the east coast, if the wind is coming from the east, it means a storm is approaching. Overnight I heard the wind starting to pick up and it's continuing to pick up. Last night the flapping of the tarp kept me up. So I came out and actually tied it down to a lower anchor point here. So the wind couldn't scoop underneath it and rattle it. So the plan this morning, it's relatively early in the morning. I would say it's close to seven o'clock. Uh, I've already taken down the tent, already had breakfast, already had coffee, and I'm gonna head back uh, with relatively no stops. Like I'm not gonna fish or um, putter along because the wind, this weather is making me a little cautious. It's starting to swirl. I had a solo trip earlier this year where I was stuck in a portage for like four hours waiting for the wind to die down. I'd rather not do that today. I'm gonna sit by the fire a little longer and then I'm gonna pretty much pack up and head back to the car. 
It wouldn't be a solo trip if you didn't have some sort of wind condition. I was just about to take off and I forgot about the minnow trap. I went over to grab it and pull it up and it actually came apart. There was nothing in it, including my uh, trout guts. Ooh, I see a little blue sky. What is that over there? That was the last little slog there. Lost a shoe, but recovered, made it out. <laughs>